Those in manufactured housing may own the structure, but they don't own the land. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me is Delaware State Representative Paul Baumbach. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. We're talking about manufactured housing or mobile homes, as many people refer to these units, but we're not talking about a unit that you can necessarily hook up to the back of your truck and take with you. We're talking about a structure that generally stays in place. It's really merely a home that was moved there once. It's not movable afterwards. In the, va in the vast majority, they're, they're immovable. And yet they're on rented land. Uh, so this makes a really unique relationship between the homeowner and the landowner. Uh, normally, for if you're renting an apartment and the landlord raises the rent too much, you say, well, thanks, but no thanks, and you go to another complex down the street. You can't do that if your home's tied down to that land. So when the l land rent goes up, you're captive there. So it's a unique situation, and it requires some unique handling. And this was leading to some issues in terms of finances for the owners of these manufactured homes. Uh, there have been a series of pieces of legislation that work to address some of the issues that have arisen over the years. One is a bill that sets up a process for landlords and tenants to better communicate with each other. Yes, indeed. The, um, there's been a lot of attempts literally over the past 20 years and we think we finally fixed it. Um, it's a rent, what we call it a rent justification bill. It's a rent justification process. And it begins with the landowner saying, we want to raise your rent a certain amount. Here's the reasons. Let's sit down and talk about it. And it actually f compels people to sit down and talk. And if they can't on their own figure things out, then there's an arbitration step. And even that can be appealed to the courts. So it's a nice, um, just a sequence of steps, nice and clear. And it begins with communication. And I think that that communication process enabled us to break the 20-year logjam and, and find the solution. In addition to that piece of legislation, there's n another one about the assumption of a lease after a sale. Give us an indication as to how this could work. Sure. Well, um, if I'm if I own my home, my, my manufactured house, and I sell it to you for let's say twelve fifteen thousand dollars, and I say you know this is this cost me five hundred fifty dollars a month for land rent, and you're like okay, well that's a fair price for the home and. I can afford that $550. So you give me a check and I take off and you now own the home and you go to the landlord and ready to pay the $550. They say, oh no, by the way, the rent's $750 because I didn't have the right to assign my lease to you. So you're now stuck with that higher lease that you weren't planning on and you had no rights there. Um, the way that, that we're changing the law is so that the buyer has the right to choose to either assume the lease for the rest of the term, you know, half a year or so, or to negotiate a fresh lease with the landlord. So it enables the buyer to have uh, the choice rather than to, to have that power only at the seller. So it's the assumption of the lease for the term of the lease. It's not necessarily in perpetuity in that landlords would have the ability to raise rents in the future. Absolutely. The, 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 uh, the rules in Delaware are that uh, the lease uh, is renewable. Uh, at least you can't, you, can't up, uh, you can't increase the rent more than once per year. Um, so there's there's rules there, and now that we have the rent justification going in, it also sets the rules for how much it can be increased. And there's another piece of legislation I want to quickly ask you about, and it's related to the idea of landlords potentially wanting to sell their land. Give us an idea as to what this could mean for tenants. Sure, this is one, especially you've got a you have a uh, a park, a community with say 50 homes, and the developer says, you know what, I just want to turn this into condos or turn this into whatever. Um, then you have 50 families who have nowhere to go. Their, their homes are tied down to that land. They really aren't movable, but it's the, the landowner's land, so they sort of have that right um, to do what they want with their land, sort of. So this, uh, this, what this bill does is it gives the homeowners, it improves the homeowner's uh, approach for making a counteroffer and saying, we want to give you as much money as, as you wanted, but we want to actually own our own destiny. Thanks for being with us. We've been talking with State Representative Paul Baumbach. I'm Jill Horner.